According to a recent survey, more than a third of young people are put off having children because of pressures on their finances, worries about the state of the world, not least climate change. 38% of 18 to 34-year-olds have, quote, fears about the state of the world. And 35% are concerned about the impact of the on, on the environment. The birth rate is, is below replacement. And yet, research shows that women, on average, are having less children than they want to. Meanwhile, another survey showed that one in five women have said that they have been coerced to have an abortion that they didn't want to. What on earth is going on? And should we be worried about the baby drought? To discuss this, I am joined in the studio by writer and cultural commentator Lois McClatchy. So, Lois, tell us, why should people be worried about birth rates being so low? And what are the implications of this on society? Well, you're absolutely right that they're very low. Um, the replacement level for um, the population is for everybody to have two children. And right now we're averaging 1.5. So the trajectory of that is that the, the size of our population is going to fall quite dramatically. Now, this has implications on three areas. Firstly, uh, economic implications. Now, we can look over at Japan, who are a little bit further down the trajectory than us. They've, um, their trajectory is to lose 30 million in the next 30 years. Their economy is, is very stagnant because of that. So we can look at those implications and ask why. Well, that leads on to the, the second reason uh, why this has such a severe implication. It's on the welfare state, and, you know, we're very... Um proud of our welfare in this country. Uh, but ultimately, it's a Ponzi scheme. That means it's a pyramid. So we have to have a healthy number of working adults to be able to support those who are at the ageing end of the pyramid. If we have that upturned, that's going to have very severe implications for those who are squeezed at the pressure of trying to provide. And also, it's going to have terrible implications for those of us who'd rather not spend our elderly years cared by, you know, chat GPT and a Henry Hoover. If we <laughs> want to have, uh, you know, solid uh, ability to, to look forward to our, you know, the welfare first scheme working for us, we have to be providing mm -hmm. the number of people that, that need to have it. And, and finally, it has implications for us as individuals. We know for generations that what gives people fulfillment in their lives, what gives people um, meaning, is not usually from careers or, or even having a meaningful cause that they're excited about. And ultimately, it often comes from relationships. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I am concerned about the number of, of people saying that they are so crippled with fear about the climate that they are not having children, because that means that not only are we introduced producing further anxiety into our population, but we're then saying that they can't even have families, which we know is num one of the number one ways to, to reduce anxiety and to bring stability into our lives. So it is a very concerning trend. And we've seen recently, so the, the Barbie film has been this huge phenomenon, and there's a, there's a clip, and I think we have the clip mm. from that, um, with, with these children sort of smashing up um, their baby dolls and, and, and turning to the girl boss Barbie instead. So I was be I've been quite surprised, actually, and we'll come to the poll results later in the show, um, but it seems that actually people are not really in agreement with you and I on, on this baby drought subject. <laughs> and do you, so do you think that we have an antinatalist culture, that people just don't want to have children, you can't force them to? I'm glad you brought up Barbie. Actually, I just wrote about this today in the European Conservative. Um, and I think Barbie, the movie, if people have seen it, it's a really good reflection on where we are with championing this idea of having the girl boss, having... Uh, is, is it that we want women to grow up and, and say, you know what, I don't need a man at all, I don't need children, that is my fulfilment, it's entirely from my career? Or have we gone a little bit astray? And you know what, with um, the... If we look across the nation, we've never been a lonelier population, we've never been a more anxious population, population. Uh, I think one in three households right now are single adult households and we're, we know looking around that we're a society crippled with depression and I can't help but think by having this uh, outlook which has degraded and devalued family relationships we've done ourselves and our neighbours no favours whatsoever and I think it's something uh, that the, the current government have not particularly done enough uh, to, to empower women and men uh, to embrace parenthood and to feel encouraged, supported and empowered to do that. So on that, I'm going to bring my panel in. Michael, you're, I think, um, I think you are the only person who has children um, on this panel. Um, so could you tell us a little bit more, you know, do, do you feel that... How it happened? We, no, not about how you had children, but no. Do you, do, you, do you feel that, you know, 
we're overblowing this baby drought thing because I know that obviously lots of people are concerned about climate change. They're concerned about overpopulation. We're concerned about underpopulation. Well, first of all, I do wonder whether this is all an attack on uh, you know the people like me who believe that global warming is a, a dreadful problem. Uh, and it's not just global warming that people are worried about. They're worried about nuclear proliferation, the possibility of nuclear war between uh, superpowers and all of that, and um, uh, which is astonishingly hasn't happened in 80 years since Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, and, and, of course, the problems of mass migration. Uh, but, I, I mean, when I was born, I think the population of the world was 2.5 billion in 1958. It's now about 8 billion. And, uh, despite what you're saying, it's going to go up a fair bit more to about 11 billion, isn't it, before it starts coming down again. Now, if, if, the, if, the, if the world... If the population had stayed at 2.5 million, uh, then the problems of climate change would be a lot, lot re less. A, you know, a lot of what's going on, the, the climate change is going on, is because there are so many people in the world consuming um, uh, energy and, all, uh, and, and so on and uh, emitting carbon. Um, and therefore, I would welcome the population coming down, but, but it'll which, probably which be too late. Which, it'll be too which late to save wanna, us. Which exactly ones do you want to get rid of, right? So that's, that's firstly, I'd really... Exactly what that. ones? Well, which, which people in the world are polluting too much for you? That's a pretty disappointing... No, no, we all are, uh, including myself. Not true. Right. No. Second of all, who are you yes, saving the world? Yes, it is in my case. Second, second of all, hang on, hold on. Second of all, who are we saving the world for? What is the point of conserving a world if there are no human beings in it? Thirdly... Well, nobody's like advocating the, no Hold on, human you've, had you, you've had you speak. Right. Hold, uh, and then lastly, I'd like to come to the data of a, a demographics analyst called Stephen Jay Shaw. He's projected by, the, by 2050 there's going to be 800 million people suffering from something called unplanned childlessness. That's people that have been scared out of having children, but 80% of those that end up not having kids wanted them. So this is a major demographic and personal um, meaning crisis that we're suffering from. And I can speak from personal experience here. Generations before, uh, if conditions were different, I probably would have had kids by now as well. But the pressures that are put on you just, just by um, uh, economics, politics, uh, social media and, and the relationship market at the moment is a nightmare for younger and younger people. So we really do need something to fix this. Mm -hmm. final, final word to Lois very quickly. I think that there are many women who really are quite terrified of unplanned childlessness. Um, and the, the family situation in this country is really quite... You know, the atomization is, is quite frightening and detrimental to a lot of people. What do you think? Yeah, I, we can be really scared of this conversation in Britain because it touches the A word, abortion, that we talked about. It's that one in five women are having a coerced abortion, one that they don't even want. But I think the solution, therefore, is to empower and make sure that women feel comfortable, supported and helped to bring children into the world and they won't be left alone or abandoned and having societal solutions, including support from men, uh, to do so. That was Lois McClatchy Miller. Thanks so much for your time today. And thank you also to Connor Tomlinson and Michael Crick.